Home Life and Style is brought to you by The Pine Hills, offering inspired new homes and daily adventures just 45 minutes from Boston. Snow and Jones, a fixture in New England homes since 1952. Classic Tile and Stone, your tile and stone destination. Vineyard Home, elements for a fine home, including fireplace, music, video, and automation. And South Peak, your ultimate four season resort on Moon Mountain. I'm Parker Kelly. Welcome to Home Life and Style. <laughs> I am passionate about design, food, and travel. I love discovering new places, meeting new people, and sharing who they are, how they live, and what they love. In each episode, I'll introduce you to a new destination through the eyes of the people who call it home. Join me as we celebrate these towns, these people, these homes in style. Today I am excited to be coming to you from the south coast of Massachusetts. For the next eight episodes, I will be featuring my renovation of an 1813 ship captain's home on Front Street in Marion, Massachusetts. From the moment Cap and I set foot on the property, we saw the massive potential to bring it back to its glory and make it a showpiece. The bones were great, but the house was extremely dated and had not been recently cared for. Our perfect kind of project. Cap and I had featured the South Coast several times on different TV shows we produced. The South Coast is indeed beautiful. Marion was one of our favorite towns for reasons that will become clear through these episodes. In these eight episodes, I'll show you the many amazing things this small quintessential New England coastal town of Marion has to offer and introduce you to the key players involved in helping us transform it. Some of my trusted partners, like Longfellow Design Build, Classic Tile and Stone, Vineyard Home, Snow and Jones, and Mid Cape Home Centers. I'll also be showcasing and working with some local businesses like Davis Land Design, Marion Fence, J and J Woodworking. Front, but then yes. I'm looking; it doesn't look straight lines. And yes. And then I'd rather keep. The do I still get the knot? Home. You still get the knot. Okay. I will do. And I still get all this right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Surroundings. Back from the dog. The dog. <laughs> it, Our inspiration. <laughs> inspiration. So we were glad to be on the same page. Yeah. And Melinda Eaton awesome. Drapery. And then this will just be like that. Perfect. Just like we wanted. This won't be a typical renovation show with all demolition and design, but there will be plenty of demolition and design, like widening doorways, vaulting ceilings, custom woodworking, landscaping, decking, tiling fencing, wallpapering, and adding fixtures, window treatments, and decorative painting. All the things you and I love. Plus, I'll be peppering the eight episodes with lifestyle segments, showcasing the history of Marion, telling stories about the previous owners of the house, and I'll be talking with town historians from the Sipican Historical Society and the Marion Historical Commission, the head of school at Tabor Academy, and taking a personally guided tour of some of the conservation areas in Marion with the Sipican Land Trust. And as we do in every show, at the end of the eight part series, we will have a huge dinner party with a band, a local winery, and top chef Stephen Coe. Welcome to Marion and our Front Street project. Let's go. Originally called Sipican for the Native Americans who lived here, Marion was settled by Pilgrim families in 1678. Today, the town of Marion has a population of about 5,000 and increases quite a bit in the summer months. It's a small and charming community where people care about and feel for one another. There's a politeness and friendliness here that's truly unique. 
the Marion Historical Commission and Sipican Historical Society have deemed our home one of Marion's historically significant homes and part of the architectural fabric and charm of village history. I'm excited to say that our home has recently been added to their inventory of historic assets in the Commonwealth. Our home was built in 1813 by Captain John Pitcher, brother of Elizabeth Pitcher Tabor, who I will show you is a philanthropic legend in Marion. The home, which is now in the federal cape style, was originally a smaller cape, and the original front door faced the east toward the harbor. The back of the house, which is now the front of the house, was a large pasture, 10 acres or so, where Captain Pitcher's cows and sheep grazed. Captain Pitcher was not only a mariner, but a farmer as well, one of many during Marion's more rural history. Front Street, you see, did not extend much beyond South Street in 1813. The only access to the house was from Pleasant Street, down a path, later named Pitcher Street, after Captain John Pitcher. After Captain Pitcher and his wife Catherine passed away, the home and the land were bequeathed to the First Congregational Church, fondly known as the Captain's Meeting House. The home became the church's parsonage and remained so for many years. The 10 additional acres were later subdivided for residential homes. In the mid-1960s, the First Congregational Church sold the parsonage to the Pengaro family, who lived at the home for 11 years. The family made many renovations at the time. They removed the outside stairs and porch that led to the second floor. The Pengaro family also changed the face of the house to the federal style, changed the roof line from a hip roof to a gable, and added a two-car garage with an apartment above. The Pangaros ran their Sipican Publishing Company, the Marion Sentinel newspaper, and an advertising agency out of that first ground floor. In 1977, the Pangaros sold the home to the Roman Catholic Bishop of Fall River, and it became the rectory for St. Rita's Church next door. And that's what it's most recently been, a rectory for 44 years. And now, it's ours. It seems everyone in our community has a connection to our home. Having been here since 1813, it clearly has a lot of history, which you now know. It holds a lot of memories and is a special place in this community for sure. And it's Caps and my privilege to be its stewards now. I've got joy to share with you in my arms. Just a little hug every day will solve your problems. I've got love to share. Need a fresh new look for your kitchen or bath? Snow and Jones can help you get there. We've been located on the South Shore in Cape Cod since 1952 as a family business, so it's given us a long time to establish roots and a good reputation. We really try to train our people on style and design as well as the technical aspect because missing one or the other can really throw everything off. So uh, they have great insight. We really can take all those pieces together and create that full project. Start your Snow and Jones project today. Cap and I fell in love with 113 Front Street in March of 2021 and made an offer right away. Our offer was accepted 
and we were eager to get started. We officially started our renovation in June of 2021, and it took more than a year and a half to finish. And as with any home, there are still some things to do, but we're living here now, and I'm ready to share. Our home has an ideal location in the village, close to the general store, shops like Mimi's, Kate's restaurant, the townhouse, the music hall, the Marion Arts Center, the Elizabeth Tabor Library, several churches, the post office, Tabor Academy, the Sipican Women's Club, and more. We also have easy walking to Silver Shell Beach, where across the bay, I can see my hometown of Falmouth and its short one block stroll to the lovely Water Street and the Beverly Yacht Club. The sea has always played an important role here. Once a thriving port for whaling and shipping, Marion is now known for its recreational appeal with such things as sailing, powerboating, kayaking, and fishing. The winds of Buzzards Bay and the access to so many great destinations make this a favored harbor for sailors. There are boat yards like Burr Brothers and Bardens that have operated businesses here for years. And the Beverly Yacht Club is one of the oldest yacht clubs in America. You may know that Cap and I are lifelong boater sailors, and being part of this incredibly active and historic yacht club is an honor for us. We love living here. Now, let's get to the transformation. My first order of business, after discussing my wants and needs for the project, was to meet back at the house with Mark Bogosian, the owner of Longfellow Design Built, Allison, the architect, and Kevin, the hey, general Parker, contractor. Allison. Nice to see you. Great to see you too. Hey. So this is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Parker, nice to see nice you. Too. So Kevin is going to be your project manager. So he is going to be the one that makes this all come together, um, nice. which is great. He's going to be working with all the employees, the subs, but every week giving you updates and sometimes daily of what's going on. Okay. So, uh, so you're going to get to know I... him very well. Kevin works hand in hand with Allison. So as we first walk the house, when Alice and I are coming up with ideas with you, we want to make sure she's involved to the very end. So she's going to be working with Kevin to make sure all the ideas and concepts we've come up with are going to be implemented here in the house. He's taking time to look through the plans, understand the scope of work, and he's also starting to think about what does he want to get ready to order? Um, what are the long lead times? What are the issues with an older house? There's certain things he's going to want to look for day one before he even has the demo crew come out here. Um, and a lot of those are just making the house safe for the demo. Um, do we have to move the electrical before we can demo a portion of the home? Um, is there an issue with the gas? Is there other issues with the town? All those he's checking before we start, so that way once we start, it's a smooth project. Wow, yeah. got it. Okay, let's do it. Right. Yeah, let's do it. Glad you're here. So Allison, can you explain to Kevin what we're trying to accomplish by opening up these walls and what we're looking at in the space? The main goal here is to try to make this kitchen a lot bigger and a lot um, more bright and let in more light. So um, what we want to do here is take out this whole pantry, um, which includes moving the electrical panel here um, and extending the kitchen all the way down. Um, and that takes into the office as well. So this is going to be um, the main kitchen here with an island and then more storage on that side, but it's all going to be open and feel like one kitchen. Enjoy. Yeah, this is going to be an amazing kitchen. I can see it. Can you see it? I can see it. You I'm can excited see it. for that door. It's wide open over there that mm -hmm. lends all the light into right. the kitchen. So Allison, what size door did you design to come from the kitchen to the deck? So we wanted to do a 10 foot door, either a sli uh, double slider or a four panel slider. One of the things at Longfellow, we have a structural engineer on staff. So Great. Tom, um, who's our structural engineer, works hand in hand with Allison and Kevin to make sure that the headers are designed properly. He's got all that information from our engineer who's available when he's got questions. All right, all right, here's it. This is the floor. Look at this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look at this. I know his way around. Mark memorizes an entire house one time in. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I can't remember to bring milk home, but I can remember the house that we built five years ago. By the wallpaper. Yeah. 
So this area is interesting. I mean, you have a shower room by itself. You've got a half bath and then another small half bath. I think, Allison, can you explain what we're trying to do here and what we're creating? Yep, so instead of wasting space on this hallway, we're closing off um, this whole space and making it into two ensuite bathrooms. Um, so it's able to capture all of this space um, and take into account some of that hallway space that isn't really needed and opening it up right into both bedrooms. Great. So Kevin, this is going to be interesting. When this changes, this changes dramatically. Mm -hmm. So yep. obviously these areas will be gutting right to the studs, upgrading all the electrical, plumbing, insulation, everything that needs to be. So the bathrooms, when they're finished, will be like a new construction bathroom in the historic home. Yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. I've worked with Christian and Julie for about seven years now, for about 30 projects. They care as much as I do about the finished product. And every time I walk in, I'm always like, girls, what do we have new? And they always have things set aside to show me. And it's, every time I go there, it's so exciting. They text me pictures as soon as tile comes in that they think is really exciting. Like on, Even on a Saturday, I'll get a text. And they'll know that I'm just as excited to see it as they are to share it. And so they're, they're my go-to. Recognized and respected. Classic tile and stone on Boston's South Shore. At Longfellow, we have a constant need for quality materials and supplies. Knowing Mid-Cape can commit their best to us means we can commit our best to our customers every time. Mark and Kevin from Longfellow came back to discuss our options for making the front street side feel more like the actual front of the house. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, he's from uh, Longfellow Design Build. It's uh, his company, and this is uh, Kevin. Nice to meet you. project nice manager you. on our, uh, cool. our project, and Susanna is uh, helping us with the outdoor landscaping. Yeah. Oh, that's going to tie it all together. So exactly. That way everything kind of, you know, when this is all said and done, this indoor outdoor living, and they have a great Hopefully. house. Yep. And she yeah. actually, when the, we did underneath the um, foundation, uh, she actually put it in a little bit so that we can make room for that portico. So right. it's already sort of set up for that. That's right. Great. All and right. We're going to put a, like a semicircular driveway here, Mark. Okay. And then that portico is going to pull off the house. Yep. Yeah. The portico is key. I think Great so too. It'll yeah. have different depth to the house as well. So yeah. it's not the. Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone looks at it, it's just like. Yeah, what is going on here? Yeah. You know, so I think this will embrace the fact that this is front street. So know. where do we want to, because ideally you don't even touch the granite. Well, um, we have a guy too, Susanna has a guy, that was going to just move it a little bit. If he could do that, if he could do a slight to move, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, we're going to move it back. So just tie yeah. it back to here. Yep. Okay, yeah. great. We'll be yeah, out of your way. That's a little too, uh, you didn't fix it, did you? No, not yet, but it's we're going to. It's a little gonna... too wide, really. I yeah, I'd go. Recommended like six to I kind of center between the windows, so I'm going to have William cut me a couple temp rafters. We already discussed it this morning, just to nail them up, um, to see what that looks like, and see if it looks too narrow or too wide. Essentially, it'd only be moving it in about six inches, maybe even less. But what I, I like giving... about that too is where the ridge comes around. You don't want that to be too low when you're soft. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you've got so much height, you don't want to... You don't want to feel tight. Right. So by bringing that in, and I think that the roof pitch there, if it doesn't match, you don't have to keep that exact pitch. Right. So even if you go a little bit shallow, just to make sure that... I'd almost just make... Yeah, keep your soffit up high enough that it feels like you have plenty of height. Right. And we can kind of take a look at the gable end and see what the pitch of the roof is over there. Um, see if it's relative to this. Oftentimes they try to make them the same, but the side uh, yard looks not always the case. Yeah, the, our team did that. We put in those privets. We're gonna take these out. This is gonna be a fence. Remember the uh, granite posts from the back? Yes. We're gonna take those, and uh, we have a local guy, Marion Fence. He's gonna um, he's gonna take those granite pieces, move them out here, and we're gonna put the picket in between oh, the, the granite. And what a great yard! You're seeing how much this house has to offer. Yeah. 
everyone's like, I can't believe you have this much space in town. This right is downtown. crazy. I love this town. What a great area. It's awesome. It is. It's Your awesome. first time here? No, no. I've been here many times, but I've had the opportunity now throughout this project to get more acquainted with this downtown area. All the other projects that we're doing in Marion haven't been this close to the village. Uh -huh. Just being able to walk over, go to some of the shops, you see how it's a spectacular location. Our new general store that's been all rehabbed. Oh, it's fantastic. So and from this location, you can just walk downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, which is a great. Yeah, Mark's Mark's uh, showrooms are in in some really great great neighborhoods too. Nice. Yeah, nice. so he knows it for sure. Good. Yeah, well, well, I'll let you go you on your way, there. and I'm going to do a little bit more measuring to figure out where our pieces. It's, oh, it's great to meet you. Great to meet you. Yeah. yeah. I'll see you again, I'm sure. Take yeah. care. Thank you. See you. Allison Longfellow's architect came to measure so she could start the architectural drawings. After the Longfellow team got a good sense of the project, touring and measuring and planning, I headed to Falmouth to one of the Longfellow Design Build showrooms to talk with kitchen designer Mark Barr. Uh, so we have the we have the sink centered in the on the window. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the dishwasher on the right hand side of the sink. Uh, I have a cabinet that would be for trash and recycling on the left-hand side of the sink. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. And then uh, we moved the, uh, the double oven, which was on this side of the room, moved it back into the main work area, um, lengthened this wall a little bit and shortened up on the opening uh, to allow us to get the double oven and the fridge there. Uh, cooktop on the island, reoriented. I have another island or peninsula because we're off, we're coming off a wall. Yeah about six feet off the wall and then you get your stools on the back side there. So it gets the stools away from, you know, the working part of the kitchen, mm -hmm. which good or bad mm -hmm. is, you know, we want feedback. So mm -hmm. um, input is good. Okay. So down here, um, so we have some cabinetry that can act as pantry storage. You can house your, you know, blender, Vitamix, other small appliances. We can figure that out. It's going to be a nice kitchen, I yeah. think. You know, I'm glad we used some, this room. Yeah, introduce some shiplap. Again, just kind of get your get a feel for what mm -hmm. your style is. Mm -hmm. Well, this is great. This is this is great. I, I'm glad you brought these too. This this really helps. Mm -hmm. After making our decisions for what original parts of the house to maintain and what to change, we started to plan the demolition. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> I see your dumpster came. Mm -hmm. We're all set, ready to go. Yeah. Allison, nice to see you too. Nice to see you too. So generally, first day of construction, I like to have the designer here and just review the scope one last time before I actually uh, break <laughs> ground here. Um, especially with a remodel like this being um, a historic um, renovation, uh, definitely don't want to disturb anything that is meant to stay yes. or remain. Okay. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. The Thank way it is now. So, yeah. so Allison's going to say, um, yes, that wall can come down. So it's like the measure twice cut once but it's kind of that's like correct. double yeah. check before you knock down walls mm -hmm. that's, that's absolutely yeah correct. so this will be filled and so today's really day one day one yep day one so what uh what we're going to be doing inside there today is protecting areas and isolating areas that we will be working on um, i know that you're saving your floors we're going to protect your existing floors um, from a lot of traffic foot traffic screws dirt and it can scratch them more than they already are and it just makes it easier in the end to refinish and so you bring guys back to are life in there now already we're in there starting to uh, set up, yep. Okay, let's go in, let's go in. Yeah, I can't wait for this ramp to go so we can actually see what this space looks like. Yeah, this is gonna be incredible. It is indeed. All right, so here we are in the kitchen. I do have some guys in the other room here starting to protect the floors and setting up some poly um, temp wall, zip wall system, just to keep the dust people. So in this area here, uh, day one, what we plan on doing is we're gonna kill all the power, make safe the area before we touch anything. Uh, we do have electrical panels here. Our electrician's gonna be coming out to meet us. This panel feeds everything in this kitchen so we can easily turn all these breakers off. We're gonna leave everything as it is right here, undisturbed uh, prior to our electrician coming in and taking a look at it himself. We're going to be taking down the cabinets and things that we can do um, right now without disturbing any electric. Again, we can turn these outlets off, but we always uh, make safe the project prior to doing too much substantial demo.
Tune in next week, where we do the demo and design on Front Street and explore more of the town of Marion.